Hello and welcome. Today's project is all about the second part of my anxiety story. What led me to extreme anxiety? Anxiety where I couldn't even leave my house. Anxiety where I was completely baffled and fixated over my health. Like, What were the circumstances that led me there? If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please watch part one of this because it's really important. It's not super important, but it'll help you understand more about your anxiety and how you're feeling. I'll leave the link below. But I am a CBT coach and NLP master practitioner. I help people with anxiety. I help people overcome the chaos that is occurring in their lives because, well, I am someone who came from anxiety. I came from health anxiety. So many of the clients that come to me, they say, Brad, I relate to your story. I relate to what you're going through and you speak my language and, and I'm so grateful for that. But also the reason is, is because I came there. I came from that hell, that chaotic hell. Now, recovery, anxiety recovery led me to become more self-conscious, self-aware of what was happening internally. It's like, to use a Harry Potter reference, muggle to wizard, right? The wizard is somebody who transforms. It's like a new, it's like discovering something that was here all along that you that was right under your nose right it's the that transcendent experience it's that spirituality it's this new way of perceiving and being in the world and the muggle is like the conservative the the one that stays in the bubble and then the wizard is, is the one that transforms the world around them all right and so because the, the more I understood why I was suffering from anxiety and what circumstances led me to anxiety, uh, I, I was gathering new unseen information that was lurking within my unconscious mind that I didn't know was there this whole time, right? I was discovering parts of myself that needed to be brought up so that I could burn them away and then incorporate new information that'll help better orient myself in this world. The world of suffering, the world of chaos, right? I mean, the world is a tragic place, but if we can orient ourselves properly with the right mindset, the right tools, habits, then we can really live such a different life. And I'm coming from that life of way less anxiety peace, uh, structure, order. The world of the anxiety sufferer is disorder, right? Order that is disruptive. There's too much, too much happening, too many possibilities. That's not good. Of course, your anxiety is going to run 24 seven. Now, what circumstances brought me to the anxiety I faced in my later 20s? Well, the first thing is, I had many past high emotional events within me that I needed to confront and deal with. Past traumas, like a panic attack when I had at 10 years old. I didn't understand what happened when I was 10. I had a panic attack and then 10 years later, I had another panic attack because the same feelings came up and I reacted to the same feelings with the same emotion, the same reaction, right? And I needed to confront that panic attack. What happened? Why was I thinking the way that I was thinking? What happened back there when I was 10? You know, did I mislabel that, those feelings as dread rather than excitement? Yeah, I did. Um, did I not understand what was going on internally. Oh, well, yeah, of course, I was a really young kid, right, at the time. So I had to confront all of these different domains, uh, these memories, well, even high school um, and all through childhood. And then later in my 20s, I had to confront these emotional experiences and really play out what happened and then release them from my unconscious mind. I was, I was holding on to them because I, I haven't fully fleshed them out, understood them, resolved them, attached safety to them. The second 
reason why I, I went into extreme anxiety in my 20s is that I grew up in a protective bubble, right? I always leaned on my parents for help when things got a little bit tough, right? And it became a habit of mine. So when I had a project that I was anxious about from school, I would come to them telling them I was worried about it. I didn't know what to do. I was freaking out. And I, kn I started to know, a I started to recognize a connection within me of, of, of concern. And my parents would react to that concern and help me. So I unconsciously adopted this reaction of if I got a tough thing to do from school, I'd come to them and say, um, you know, I have this tough thing, I'm freaking out, I need help. And they'll be like, okay, I gotta, I'm going to help you. And so I, w I relied on my family as a crutch. And whenever things got tough around me, friends, um, health concerns, I leaned on them. And they would console me. But then later in my life, as I got older, I was even more afraid to step outside of my house, my comfort zone, to be on my own, to be independent, because I relied on people like my family for that help. And to be without that help, that was anxiety, produ anxiety producing. Number three is I was entertaining the Peter Pan lifestyle for way too long entertaining these coping strategies like friends, drugs, alcohol, sex, food for temporary numbing. Because we live in a society nowadays where we can prolong maturation. We can prolong that. Younger kids are not maturing until they're 30 now rather than like 10 years ago it was like early 20s. Because we can stay in our parents home for longer. We can easily turn to YouTube, Netflix, go to the weed store and smoke weed, right? And, you know, go to get that comfort food. And it's just so damn easy. But what I realized for me was that the more unbalanced my life became, the harder it was for me to seek that transcendent experience with drugs, alcohol, sex, porn, um, food. It was harder because I would get these crazy dopamine blasts, right? And they would last the night, you know, a night of debauchery, a night of fun. You wake up, like I said in the last video, that coping strategy is short-lived and then what happens is that you have this yearning to go and seek that same reward again because that dopamine blast from the weed sex porn right that's that's a reward orientation mechanism right that you're telling yourself that this is what's important get while the getting is good that's what's needed right and so i was always seeking that what's needed and I, I found it harder and harder to get that blast the more i was getting it because i was my tolerance was i guess we're getting more i was getting more tolerant and then I was, I was, I was, I noticed within me that the, the crashes from the aftermath of the dopamine would be more severe and I would get more of the craving. But the craving would, I noticed that this craving would be more of a frustration for me all the time. I'd be constantly frustrated because I wasn't getting what I wanted right here and now. I needed that thing right now and I would get anxious frustrated and also I noticed that there were too many possibilities in my life in the Peter Pan lifestyle you know Peter Pan being king of the lost boys on Pleasure Island right everything goes why would you want to grow up you know when you can stay here being king of everything but being king of everything is not good because that means there's too many possibilities. And what happens when there's too many possibilities? 
There's too, mu too much information to pay attention to. And thus, that's going to increase your anxiety. So take a health anxiety sufferer, for example. They go on Google. They search their symptoms. What happens? There's too many possibilities of what the symptom could be. Why is that anxiety producing? Because it could be any of those things. Which one is it? Oh, it could be this cancerous tumor thing. Okay, well, let's treat that. But then they treat it and they go to the doctors. It's not that. It could be this other thing. There's too many things, right? And so when people label what they're currently going through as anxiety, it's actually, it's actually a relief. It was a relief to me to know that I was suffering from health anxiety because it shrunk my world down to this one label, right? Rather than the infinite amount of labels. And now, now I can focus on, okay, health anxiety. What is health anxiety? How can I overcome health anxiety? What are the steps I need to know from somebody? And so that's what my channel is about, is I want you to use this channel as a tool to overcome the anxiety you're currently contending with. Right? This is not a coping channel. This is a channel to push yourself and to recover naturally. Now, the fourth thing that led me to extreme anxiety is I was entertaining the bitterness within me. So I was entertaining the Cain within me. If you're not familiar with the Cain and Abel story, Cain is uh, the tiller of the earth and Abel is a shepherd. And... Abel is making all the right sacrifices to God. He's getting everything. He's like that person at Harvard who is just overly beloved and he's just get, everything comes to that person, right? And then Cain is the one who's making sacrifices and he's not getting the results from God. God is not recognizing his sacrifices. He's becoming more bitter and resentful because the people around him, well, Abel in this case, is, is getting all this good stuff. He's just on this proper path. And so for me, my old self, what was happening was I was entertaining this bitterness. I was becoming bitter of the people around me that were succeeding, getting the wife, getting the education, the job of their dreams. They were succeeding. They were manifesting the dreams that I secretly deep down unconsciously wanted. And so I was entertaining this. And I was actually looking up to role models like Kurt Cobain, for example, who, who he was entertaining the dark parts of himself. He was entertaining the reckless, nihilistic, uh, punk lifestyle mindset, right? He was entertaining the Peter Pan lifestyle. And I was like, yeah, I like Kurt Cobain because he's like me. He's... You know, why should I pursue a nine to five job? Why should I pursue that, uh, you know, why should I pursue exercise or sobriety, you know? But I noticed, like I said earlier, that I was more frustrated than fulfilled. And so what Cain, what happened to Cain was instead of, instead of, making the proper sacrifices to God, what Cain does is he kills his ideal instead. But things get way worse for him because he kills his ideal. And for me, because my life got to rock bottom, I had to adopt new ideals. I had to find the ables out there and, and figure out what they were doing and what, what they were doing specifically to get those results to feel spiritually calm, relaxed, patient, and grounded. What were they doing? How did they get rid of their anxiety? So adopting a mentor, using my channel as a tool for you to overcome anxiety, using my channel as, as the ideal to overcome your challenges. Learn, grow. Because I used to laugh at people who were succeeding, who were running, who were meditating, who were promoting self-help stuff, gurus out there. I would laugh and make fun of them and ignore them. But they were the ones that I needed to follow. And I eventually followed. 
because entertaining that dark part of myself, the Kurt Cobain personality, it, was, it wasn't leading me anywhere positive. I was only brooding and, 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 and sinking further into a chaotic hell. And lastly, what I want to say is my old anxious personality, I liked the attention I was getting. When I went to my parents and I was like, oh, I need help. I'm anxious. I'm worried. What if this is this? What if this is that? I liked the attention. So you have to ask yourself, do you like the attention? Anxiety sufferers love the attention they get from their coworkers com complaining about things. Oh, this sucks. I hate doing this. This person's a, a twit. It's like, it makes you feel like you're part of something. But you can feel part of something with other people who have overcome the same challenges you're overcoming. You know, you can be a part of a new community of people who are not copers, who, who are not set in their ways, who are stretching themselves, who are reaching outside of what is familiar to them. And you can be a part of that community instead. Why wouldn't you? And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's video. Thank you so much for being here with me. Please leave a comment below. Is there something I, have, I haven't touched on yet that you want me to touch on? What are you currently going through? And what have you overcame? What are the challenges you are facing and that you, you pursued, persisted through? Do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next video. Bye for now. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell so that whenever a new video of mine appears, you will be one of the first to know. Namaste.